All right, so this is um, the second appointment. Um, so we have the patient come back in three weeks. You usually, um, in transplant cases, give the patient about two to four weeks to kind of have the calcium hydroxide sit in. Also, it gives you more time for that um, tooth to be splinted for better stability. And um, now the patient back, totally asymptomatic. Um, they're feeling fine. And um, right now, as I'm about to play this video, you can see that I'm checking that the swelling went down. And um, as you can see, um, I'm just like kind of checking that the swelling is down. There is no more uh, drainage out of that. And everything looks nice. And this is the area where we did the IND, still a little bit of scar. And now I'm just placing the um, um, rubber dam. So this is, gives you a better um, picture of how I usually do it. And then second isolation with opal dam, just because there's still a splint, so you cannot do a single tooth isolation. So I'm isolating the two, three teeth that are splinted. Again, just removing that Fuji 9, you can see that how you can distinguish that from the tooth structure. I like to remove all the Fuji first. Um, before I actually take the cotton pellet out, just so nothing is sticking. So if you can see right now, there's still a little bit of that, and then I'm just going back with my burr just to make sure it's like nice and free, and then you just take your sponge in one um, pull instead of like getting it shredded into pieces. This is another good indication, is looking at the calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide was nice and white, um, which tells you that there's no drainage. And the best way to remove calcium hydroxide um, is to actually use sodium hypochlorite. And as you can see later that um, there are still some pieces um, on the walls of the canals that are dried out. I use an ultrasonic tip that is different. It's very thin. It's um, called an AeroSafe. So I do rounds and rounds of replenishing the sodium hypochlorite. And as you can see, it gets cloudy when I apply this ultrasonic tip. Um, the cloudiness, meaning there's still some debris. So I do it until the solution runs clear. Um, as you can see, it's still getting cloudy, and I'm just doing it again and again. And now we see that things are starting getting less cloudy, meaning that we're getting close to our um, final clean canal with no debris. Um, I do it multiple times as long as it takes until it's nice and clean. Microsuction, just to kind of give you an indication of how clean the canals are. This is EDTA. So EDTA is removing a smear layer. And then the indication for that is, is you do it for one minute, or as I do it for 30 seconds with ultrasonic activation, just to kind of speed things up. What EDTA does, it removes a smear layer, which is the inorganic layer um, that is um, sodium hypochlorite cannot touch because sodium hypochlorite only removes organic layer. So what it does, it just opens up the tubules for better penetration of your sealer and gutta percha. Um, and also it's been proven that has a better antimicrobial activity alongside sodium hypochlorite. Now you got to make sure that everything is nice and dry before you introduce EDTA because you don't want them combined and then that way um, it has a total pure EDTA activity. And then when you see you're done from that EDTA, you can flush it with a final flush with sodium hypochlorite. And then everything gets dried out and then we'll be ready for obturation. What I'm doing right now is I'm using my final ethical prep in a hand file fashion with Apex Locator just to gauge, make sure that I'm patent and going back to a 20, uh, make sure it's patent and going beyond the apex, then I proceed with a matching get a percha points. This is a 2504, which is my finishing size. And I'm making sure that I have a good tuck back and making sure it's fitting to the working length. So as you can see right now, I'm just like grabbing it from the reference point and taking it out and then doing it on the other canal. That way I make sure that, okay, I'm reaching the working length that I already recorded and then it will be a good time to expose a confit radiograph. So making sure a nice tuck back here and then mark it and then place it again. So the same thing I'm doing here in the distal and the mesial and make sure everything, you see how I'm checking the tug back and then grab it from that reference point so I can make a mark in it. So once I make a mark, I know once I place it with a sealer, it will go to that length. You can see how I made a notch into that gutta percha, just where that cable surface margin is, which is my reference point. And then placing the distal canal here. And then that way, you just like know for sure that you're there, but it's always indicative to take a um, COVID radiograph. This is a tooth ready for a uh, radiograph to make sure that we're at the right length. 
Now, I just go back one more time with sterile paper points as between the time I'm taking the radiograph, some fluid can go in just to make sure everything is nice and dry. And now I'm coating the four millimeters of sealer, and then I go in a like kind of circular motion to make sure it's coat like coating the entire canal. And then I add a little bit of sealer as indicated, um, just because sometimes I take the cone out and I see some areas that are not covered with sealer, so I just add a little bit more. And then no pumping action at this point because you don't want a lot of puff. Puff is okay, but um, a lot of it I just don't like. Um, so the same thing I'm doing here um, at the distal canal, make sure it's fully seated. Now this is a system B heated tip. So it's an electrical heater. I remove the coronal part and the middle part of the gutta percha to a pre-measured length, as you can see with the stopper. So once I reach that point that I already pre-measured or a little bit shorter, it's time for me to remove that piece and then condense it with pluggers. So the same thing I'm doing on the distal. And then I remove both cones that have been seared off out. And then the, melt, the molten gutta percha can be condensed with a um, plugger. So I use different size of pluggers according to the case and according to the depth. As I can see, I can, I'm compacting them very, very well at the very um, end. Now this is a backfilled thermoplasticized gutta percha. As you can say, you can say like this is a flowable gutta percha. So it's molten, and then you just backfill the portion that has been seared off, and then you condense it with a cold plugger at the orifice level, make sure it's nice and seared with no excess gutta percha and no overflow of that covering your, um, your chamber. Same thing on the distal. I like to take my time on those, make sure you have a nice sear at the orifice versus a lot of excess gutta percha getting in your way. And I sometimes use a little bit of a system B again just to remove some of the axis of that gutta percha and go back and make sure that it's nice and smooth. As you can see, you can see the sealers like everywhere. And now I'm going to show you how to remove that sealer predictably. Now this is a resin based sealer, it's an AH plus or cold ribbon. I use a micro brush soaked with alcohol. This is the most efficient way of removing resin based sealer. Um, if you're using um, different sealers like bioceramics, water will be more efficient. But in this case, um, after I coat it with alcohol and rinse it again, and you see I go back one more time to make sure that everything is removed and there is no sealer in the chamber or the wall. After you check that, you go back with your regular bonding and etching um, protocol. And um, now I'm using a three-step um, bonding um, with prelude um, adhesive. And then I microsuction the excess of that bond to make sure there's no voids in between the gutta percha interface and where the um, resin is. You cure that, and then you're ready to apply your buildup. I use a centric tip. As you can see, it's a very thin tip to apply a core uh, material that is bulk fill. And under a microscope, you can see it's very easy to eliminate any voids because you can see exactly where it's flowing. And then you just go incrementally and very slow. That way you agitate any voids. And you can see bubbles creating like that. What I do is I move the tip around them and make sure it flows nicely and creates a very nice and solid fill. Then after curing, we can go ahead and look at it. If there is any access, we can smooth it out with our burrs as I'm doing right here right now. And this tooth has been adjusted out of occlusion in the first appointment. So I know that it's not going to be hitting until it gets a full coverage crown. So I'm basically just making sure that cava surface margin is flush and removing that excess of buildup that got um, on the sides. And then once this is done, um, you just um, take the rubber dam off and um, expose our final radiograph, make sure everything is nice, and uh, treatment is done.